gear. Ratios. So this can calculate gear ratios. It's always output number of teeth over input number of teeth. That's our formula. Now, we also write it out in this specific way of driven gear to drive gear. Okay, so we're going to have an example. different from the other one so we know that this is our drive gear this is our driven gear drive. driven all right um, and we're going to give them an amount of teeth so our driven has 80 and our drive has 20 so what would that look like if we calculate we would have 80 over 20, or we can write it as 80 to 20. We can reduce it down to 16 to 4, and even further take it down to 4 to 1. So that is our gear ratio for this, this relationship of gears. So if it is four to one, we must remember when our gears are interlocked, or meshed gears go opposite directions. So our gears go opposite directions. Therefore, we interpret our gear ratio. We have it as four to one. This is out. This is in. So if they're going in opposite directions, that's going to mean our drive gear is going to need to go four resolutions. Let's do it down here. All right. So if we apply that to our drive gear. Our drive gear must turn four resolutions, one, two, three, four, for every one revolution of the driven gear. So our revolutions are interpreted from the gear ratio are the opposite of our gears. So again, our little handle. So we need to turn this four times for our drive gear to go one revolution. Okay, 
So let's make this, let's just flip what we had before. So we're gonna make our drive gear 80 and our driven gear at 20. So it looks like 20 over 80. Or it looks like 20 to 80. And we can reduce it by 20. I mean, yeah, 1 to 4. Sorry, I'm dividing by 20. That's where it's doing that. So we get it to 1 to 4. So the way we interpret that is we need to crank our input gear one time for our output gear to make four revolutions. And it's done that way because meshed gears go opposite directions. We interpret it for the opposite gears because they go opposite directions when they are meshed together. When we see them move, this goes that way and this goes that way. So when we interpret, when we interpret our uh, ratio, although it is written driven gear to drive gear, like we mentioned here, driven gear to drive gear, we interpret it differently. We interpret it um, the gear ratio for opposite gears because we are applying what happens per this gear. All right, so like I said uh, here in this instance, we would need to crank our input gear one time for our output gear to make four revolutions. And we can consider that like an inverse. Interpretation. Okay. So what does this have to do with torque and speed? So we're going to go back to our same example. interpreting it as for every one crank we get four output revolutions we are increasing our speed this is going four times as opposed to this going one time. So our torque in this instance is um, 
making one resolution and our speed is making four resolutions. Revolutions, excuse me. So therefore, in a ratio of one to four, we have increased speed. In the instance of this one, the opposite, we have four to one. So that means we need to crank our input four times so our output makes one resolution revolution. So therefore, we increase torque. Four one equals an increased torque because if we look here and we switch this back to 80 and to 20 and we cross that out we go 4 to 1 we're going to make um, we're going to have to move this Okay. We're going to have to move this crank this way four times for this to only go one time in the opposite direction. Therefore, we're increasing torque, we're increasing the input motion that we're putting into the system, and we're decreasing the output um, speed that we receive.